Father and our God, we give you all the glory. We ask in the name of Jesus that you come. Come and lead us. Come and teach us. Come and rebuke us. Come and change us. For Lord, we are lost without you. And so Lord, we open our hearts. We open our minds. We open every gate to you, Lord, and ask of you, Lord, to come and totally take over that your name alone will be glorified. We silence all other voices in the name of Jesus, and we declare that this is a whole a fellowship with the Holy One. And so, Lord, we thank you that where you are, you make everything good. And so, Lord, we are grateful that even this day, you are going to make everything around us beautiful in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, glorify your name and shame the devil. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Hallelujah, friends. You're most welcome to this lunch hour. The Lord has a reason, has a purpose for you to be here. Amen? And so be expectant because in his house, food is not... Uh, uh, I, I mean, I mean, it's scarce. It's not. The scripture tells us actually that when he fed the, the 4,000 people with the two, I mean, two small fish and then four or four small pieces of bread, I mean, 5,000, but none was left without something. So I believe God has something for you. Hallelujah. My name is Emmanuel Oguti, and the most important thing that I cherish is that he saved me. I minister here and many, many other places by the grace of God. Amen. Uh, our topic today is a very interesting one. And I want us to listen. You see, Every time the Lord brings out a word, he is desiring to fulfill that. Amen? Every time the Lord speaks, he is desiring, either he's warning you or warning us or letting us know what he's about to do. And our topic is from this Genesis 20, I mean uh, Genesis 6 from verse 9 to 22. And the theme is walking with God as a generation. Walking with God. Friends, with me, I want us to be very serious. It says walking, not just sitting. Not just doing nothing, but walking with, with God. That tells me something already. It is something that we have to know how we can walk with Him. Because if you're going to walk with God and you don't know certain actual principles, principles, certain things that you are supposed to do, you might end up not reaching where you are going. And that is why we need to get ourselves deep in his word. Amen? 
Haleluya. Haleluya. What is walking with God? I want to begin from there. Walking with God is surrendering your all to him. You surrender your all to him. In other words, you can also call it, we can walk with God by loving him completely. And when you love God completely, you will do what he tells you to, to do. Walking with God, it means you must obey completely his commandments. That even when it is hurting, you choose to do what God is saying, not what you desire, not what people are saying, not what general, I mean certain communities are saying. But you choose to go with God. And friends, I can boldly declare that if we choose to walk with God, we will not fail to reach the goal or the destination that God has ordained for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is that? Because our theme says a generation. And friends, I want to put it to us. You can be that generation. You can be that person that can stand in our generation, in your generation. You can be that person. A generation simply means a people born and living at about the same time. You can be, I mean, different generations. We have so many. But I am telling us today, this word is calling us to check our lives. God is calling us to come back to the place where he is, the Alpha and Omega, that normally we sing. We sing he is the Alpha and Omega. And yet, when it comes to other things, he is not there. So God is calling us to come back to that place. Where he alone counts. He is the reason of my living, you are living, our living, our family living. He becomes every very important in our lives. And friends, I want to quickly submit to us that we can do it. Why am I saying we can do it? Because men have done it. It is recorded that men have done it. So me and you, we can do it. So there is no excuse like these days we say, you saw, you see the media is doing this, media, media, otherwise, you see the generation, we bring all kind of excuses. But friends, we can do it. Let's read the word before we go there. Hallelujah. 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 Genesis chapter 6 from verse 9. Are we there? This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Perfect in generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt 
For all the flesh had corrupted their way in the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of the flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence, though, I mean through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Hallelujah. Make yourself an act of growth food. Made room, I mean, made room, I make room in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubics. It is its width 50 cubics. And its height 30 cubics. You shall make a window for the ark. And you shall finish it. Finish it to a tube from above and set the doors of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, lower second and third uh, dicks. And behold, I myself, I am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of everything that is on the earth shall die. Amen? But I will establish a covenant with you and you shall go into the ark you, your sons, your wives, and your, I mean your wife, and your son's wives with you, and all and of every living thing of the flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be Male and female. Male and female. Not male and another male. Hallelujah. Eh? Male, not a woman. I mean, then women, another woman. No, male and female. He had a reason for that. Of the birds after their own kind. Of the animals after their kind. And of every creeping thing of the earth, after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. Hallelujah. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is, that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself. And it shall be food for you and for them. Thus, John, I mean Noah, did according to all that, the, that God commanded him. So he did. He did everything the Lord commanded him. Friends, I began by saying we can do it. Today, we can give all kind of excuses saying there is a lot of corruption. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of wickedness. We can give all those. But here we are seeing in the scriptures a man who was living in that time when all these things were there. But he made 
a choice to live an upright right, I mean life. The Bible tells us he was a just man. He was righteous. Friends, I know that sometimes when we bring I mean, a word like this, we even, some people begin even to pinpoint. But this is the word of God. It was more so like our time now. There's a lot of corruption if we are speaking in our nation. Today I was reading in the paper and one of the things that I saw that Uganda has stopped in alcohol consuming. It is so terrible, friends. That shouldn't be the thing they should be speaking about us. But by the way, it is there. So we see in this very nation, what the scripture is talking about is a life. So that calls me to tell, to tell us we can choose to be righteous. It is a choice. Everybody in this scripture we are seeing, everybody was doing their own thing. But Noah decided to walk a righteous life. Our families can do it, friends. Brothers, my, my brothers, we can choose to walk a righteous life, even as husbands, even as wives. Our families can choose. Friends, the Bible is telling us it was all full of corruption. It is not something of today. You see, sometimes when we talk about it, ah, it is ah, a lot of corruption. Ah, hey, this the media has come. We, we put excuses to all these other things. And yet we have not just made a decision to walk right before God. Will we choose, friends? Will you be the one that says, yes, enough of this compromise? Enough of this, I mean, and straightforward walk? Will we choose today to say, no, I cannot continue that way? So we see Noah, Noah was a just man amid this all this corruption, amid this all the violence, amid this all the thuggery that was happening, amid this. So there is nothing for us to actually put as an excuse. That because I watch, I watch these things, new, I mean, news every single moment. And all I see, I see blood, I see killing. So let me also practice it. No. No. I hear people are stealing left and right. Like for us here, now corruption has gone to a level where people are not stealing millions. They are now talking of billions. Others are talking of trillions. But will you be the person who's saying, I am not going to do that? Hallelujah. May God help us, friends. The beautiful thing is God has recorded it, so we have no excuse whatsoever. We have no excuse. So we better heal ourselves and cry out to God to help us. We better surrender completely. Our hope in, is in, I mean, in the Lord. When there is all this hardship, you wonder what to do. You better surrender it to the Lord. 
He knows where you are and where we are going. He knows it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Noah was a just man. Now, there are things that we must do if we want to walk right before God. There are things that we must do. One, you must surrender. You are all to the Lord. Second, you must have love for God. If you are going to walk with God, thirdly, you must have faith. You know, some of them will bring certain situations. And if you don't have faith, you can easily fall off. Like in the story of Joseph. Joseph was walking with God also. But a temptation came that wanted to throw him out of the way of the Lord. Friends, if Joseph had accepted to go in bed with Potiphar's wife, the story would have ended. And so we need these things called for faith and the fear of God. The Bible tells us that the fear of God is the hate of sin, period. There's nothing short of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are seeing in this story, this man who decided to walk with God. Now, another thing that will call for that is a situation where you have put your all trust. Trust. Trust in the Lord. That even when you hear certain news and it is not from the Lord, it does not shake you. Because you know the Lord is with you and the Lord cares. You know the Lord has promised me. The command of the Lord is here. The Bible is full of how we, how we ought to walk. And that's where we need to have the word of God. Because you are not going to walk with God if you don't know what the word of God says. You can't. So when we talk about reading the word of God, it is very important. Things like fellowship like this, lunch times like this, encourages us. There are people who are going to be encouraged to remain in the path of trusting, in believing God, because they have had certain testimonies in a fellowship. So you can actually be held to remain in the walk and the way of the Lord if you come and listen to this kind of testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, I must say there is a, a, an enemy that we have that can divert us from walking with God. And one, the major one, even if I don't say any other, is sin. That is it. The major one is sin. Period. Because sin will take you away from the ways of the Lord. A case in his study is found in the book of Genesis. Man, Abra, I mean, this man Adam and his wife. They were, I mean, Adam himself was in good books with God. You can imagine a situation when God would come down and just to fellowship with, with them. But see how they were taken away. In the book of Genesis, if you read from verse chapter 3, verse 
for chapter 3, from verse 7, 9, you will see it. When they sinned, they ran away from the Lord. I don't know about you. I don't know what is happening in your family. I don't know what is happening down there in the business. I don't know what is happening in those offices. Whether you are still saying, no, I am a child of God, and you stand up and you say yes. I don't know whether you are a woman who is now saying I must be, live as any other woman, and living like any other woman is taking you to do wrong things. It's taking you to shit. Recently I was somewhere, and this one really, I mean, I laughed at it. Eh? Immorality in workplaces is now called what? Work romance. Eh? They are calling it work romance. So you go romancing with people who are not your husband, who are not your wife, and you do all kind of things. You have sweet. And then the other one that they call it, eh, panado. You know what a panado is. They are hiding these things. They are making it a little bit more uh, light. We used to call them what? Spare tire. Now they have named it, co-named it what? Panados. Friends, if you are there and that is it, you need to run away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joseph ran away. Now there are very many good things. Living example, case in study, you can read again in the book of, again, Genesis chapter 5. We see the Bible tells us Enoch walked with God and he was no more. Let me just read that one before I go there somewhere else. Chapter 5 of uh, Genesis, verse 21. He says, Enoch lived 65 years and begotten Bashel. After he had begotten Bashel, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God, and he was not. Friends, it is not just an in-out move. It is a commitment through and through. In the hard times and in good times. When things are hard, you still declare he is my God. When the situations have come, you don't say now, you can see everything is hard and this man has come and you accept the bribe, corruption. Oh, this man can now buy for me some perfume since my husband cannot. Let me accept him. This woman is promising me she will take me out, maybe to UK. Let me take him. No, friends. It's not that. He walked with God until he was no more. Another case study is in the book of uh, Luke chapter 1. We read the story. Chapter 1 from verse let me check it there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see a man by the name uh, Zachariah. He was a righteous man. I am quickly bringing in that because I know sometimes people will quickly say, but now you are bringing things of the Old Testament. Eh? It's not only Old Testament. The same God that helped those people, he is the same God we are serving. Zachariah 
was a righteous man. He was a priest. He was in the service of the kingdom. But friends, the Bible tells us that even his wife was also righteous. But they were there. They said, for some years, no child. Zachariah did not find a what? A panado. <laughs> neither, did, neither did what? Elizabeth go for a panado. <laughs> eh? They remained there. They remained there and they waited. And God came through for them. Friends, have you been waiting for something and it is like not coming? Friends, I want to tell us, God does not lie. God is faithful. God will do it if you choose to remain in his path. Because in this story of Zechariah, we see God coming through for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that one day Zechariah was there ministering and the Holy Spirit, I mean the angel of the Lord came and told him that ah, your prayer has been answered. And that was the end of the misery he had. Eh? And I mean the woman was also very grateful. God took away the reproach. Is it a reproach that is pushing us, that is pushing you to do what you are doing? Friend, there is good news. Our God takes away reproaches. He can take yours. He can take for that family. He can take for us even as a nation. If there are reproaches, God can take it away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 5 to 25. If you read it, you will find it that God came for this man and sorted out the mess. The scripture tells us that he was living a righteous life. His wife was righteous. He himself was righteous, but and blameless. But those things happen, and God never forgot them. Are you thinking that God has forgotten you? Friend, I want to tell you that God has not forgotten you. Because the scripture also confirms it to us, that even our mothers, eh, women can forget their sons, but God will never forget you. So if that is the voice that the enemy is saying, you can tell him no. I know what the word of God says. And this draws me to a place of prayer. Friends, you cannot be in position to walk rightlessly before God if a prayer is by the way. If you don't pray, friend, believe me, you will be swayed away. Because through prayer, what happens is God will guide. God will speak to you. God will comfort you. God will show you what next step to take. Now, if you are not praying, you remain there. Everything becomes angazi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, isn't it good to walk with God? Are we committing tonight to yield and walk with God? Because this is why God is bringing it. I want us to give us some few advantage and we pray. Hallelujah. In the scriptures we see, which, which we read, that one of Noah. When destruction came, actually Noah was preserved. Noah was. So if we choose to do that, we are actually helping, I mean, like helping ourselves to be preserved. When calamities befall, yes, you will be 
preserved. Your family shall be preserved. Your generation shall be preserved. Your marriage shall be, name it. Now we also see in the same scripture, God speaking to Noah and telling him what was going to come. Now this is good. If you choose to walk with God, he will be letting you know what is about to come. And so you get prepared. And so you can now stand. Friends, Zachariah and Elizabeth's prayer was answered. Do we want our prayers to be answered? Let's choose to walk with God. He will answer when you're walking right. He will answer. Hallelujah. Do you want those reproaches to be taken away or moved? Walk with God. God will take away the reproaches. Do you want to be lifted up? Yes, walk with God. God will lift you up in the due time. Didn't he lift up Joseph? Joseph will found himself in prison. He found himself where? In prison, but he was not left in prison. God pulled him out of the prison and God now lifted him up to a place of prime minister if it was our time. That is God. God will now speak for you. Do you want God to speak and open doors for you? Yes, if you do walk with God, then God will speak for you. There are certain battles that God will fight for you. Hallelujah. Do you have some battles that you are fighting? Yes, if they are there, walk with God. God will fight those battles because the Bible tells us that to those who fear him, he contends with those that contend with them. God will fight that battle. Are you looking for some answers? Walk with God and answer will be given. Hallelujah. 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 Friends, we have no choice, better choice to make, but to walk with God. Because if you make that wonderful choice, friends, you will not regret. But it's the beginning place is to know God. Hallelujah. 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 Friends, I want us to pray before we leave. One thing I don't know about you, but you can choose to say, Lord, I surrender all. I want you to walk with me. I want you to guide me. I want you to fill me, to enable me that in this trying moment, in this generation, my family, my clan, name it, my place, I mean business, will bring glory to you. So let's just, if you can, stand up and just tell the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. The things that the Lord has spoken, you can claim, and you tell God, this is what I desire. I have seen, I have seen, it is possible. So give me the grace, give me the grace. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask this day that now that we have heard your word, our heart desire is that you grant us the grace. Help us to make choices. Help us to make a right choice, to walk rightly before you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that by your own spirit, empower us, empower us to obey God, your word, to obey your command. Empower us, O oh Lord, to walk in accordance to your own ways. We know it is impossible. Lord, we bless your name. I want us to pray, believing God for whatever answers that you have been desiring. We see in the scriptures, God answered the what? Zachariah and Elizabeth. I do not know 
what kind of situation, what kind of barrenness that has visited you. The Lord God is able. And now we speak in the name of Jesus Christ to every barrenness. Hear the word of the Lord. We speak to you. Lose the lies. Lose our lies. Lose our families. Lose those young people. Lose the men. Lose the women. Lose them. Lose those businesses that are not. Lose our nation that has been, no oh God, in a place of violence. Lose in the name of Jesus. Friends, let's pray. If there is some violence that is happening, God is able to calm it. Let's pray. Our God and our King, we thank you, Lord, that God, your word says that you are Lord of all lords. In particular, Lord, we lift up, oh God, every violent situation that, Lord, has been around us, that is in our nation. Our God, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you calm it down in the name of Jesus. Friends, the Bible tells us that God answered this woman. He is able to answer you. Are there reproaches? Let the Lord take it away. Lord, as we come, we accept our lives, our families, our marriages, our businesses, our ministries are full of a law, a Lord reproach. We are actually laughing stock. Oh Lord, as you visited, as you changed the situation in the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth, Lord, your word did not come to us in vain. And so, Lord, we believe you to take away all those reproaches, whether in the marriages, whether in the business, whether in the carnal career, whether, oh God, in the places of work, whether financially, whether, oh God, Lord, socially, take away the reproach. For, Lord, you are God who did it. For Elizabeth and what? And Zacharias. And you are the same God today. So, Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we give you praise. There are people that are out, that are here, that are believing you, Lord, to lift their lives, to lift them up, to lift them, oh God, from that very situation. You lifted, oh God, Joseph, from a situation of being a prisoner, and you set him free. Even now, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of prison with the slavery, we rebuke it. And Lord, we ask that Lord, may you set us free. May you set our families free. May you set the marriages free. May you set the schools free. Lord, we pray that you set this nation free from corruption and violence that has now it's now the order of the day. Oh Lord, take away from us immorality that is flowing like bushfire in workplaces, in businesses, in families, in communities. We pray that you take it even in our church. Lord, may you take it away. The Lord, we may King of glory bring glory to your holy name. Father, we do adore you and give you praise for speaking to us. We do adore you that God, you are all-knowing. I particular, Lord, thank you for that person that Lord has taken this word and Lord is making a choice to do what your word has said. Father, may you bless them 
with the abundance of a blessing that go there and never that they will remember that on this day as they listened to your word and they took it Lord you came through for them I pray that let your power go forth go forth and break your go forth and overthrow the giant go forth and change the situation go forth and end because Lord you are all in the all so to you we surrender ourselves we surrender our generation we surrender our land we surrender our families we surrender our wives we surrender those of God our husbands we surrender our schools even as things are happening we know God that you are going to do it we surrender preservation we pray that God you surrender Lord you preserve us in this generation preserve our families preserve our dear ones preserve this land that Lord calamity will not fall it again we ask of you to preserve us preserve us preserve your church the Lord God no one will dare to close her because Lord the church belongs to you we adore you Jesus we exalt you now Father we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that may your own blessing that blesses and adds no sorrow about upon our lives upon that we will lay our hands upon oh God Father our ways that brings glory upon the marriages upon the places of work upon that business upon that child Lord that needs school fees upon that parent that is wandering Lord let your favor rest upon them answer their cry Lord we ask that Lord you move powerfully in this season the Lord there will be a testimony great testimonies of what you have done and thank you father for many who are making this resolution remaking resolution now to walk to walk with you no matter what it does no matter what is around them no matter what name they have been given Lord we bless your name that the seed is now beginning to germinate and it germinates and it grows and becomes a fruit and with a lot of fruit that lasts in the name of Jesus Christ we also say Lord we will not suffer the reproach of Egypt in the name of Jesus Christ even as we Lord plan to live right now we ask of you Jesus to go forth ahead of us and bless every detail of our life bless this oh Lord this the offering bless with your own blessing increase and let it oh God please you to lavish increase upon increase upon your children break every curse Lord of the family that had been trailing them to make them poor break it in the name of Jesus Christ we give you thanks we give you honor and we give you all the glory in Jesus name we pray and we believe Amen friend God bless you come, come again it is sweet to be in the house of the Lord Amen glory to God